Hello and welcome to the in new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment today, we are going to talk about white dwarfs. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS mains papers. Let's begin with the topics that we are going to look at step by step. These are the topics that we are going to discuss. So kindly pay attention to the facts, note them down or take a screenshot, whatever is possible for you. So if we talk about this news, an international team of scientists have witnessed the drop of brightness from a white dwarf with the help of Hubble telescope and TESS. So what is this entire phenomena? Because this phenomena is not normal, usually white dwarfs take one to two months to lose their brightness. But if it happens in a span of 30 minutes, that's unusual and it needs more findings. So let's begin and talk about white dwarf. What is a white dwarf? Basically, if I have to tell you in layman terms, white dwarf is a star that has used up all of its hydrogen and now it does not have any fuel for further energy. And that is why it is known as a white dwarf. It's like a degenerate star which has lost all its fuel and now it cannot emit any energy. Generally, white dwarfs are half the size of our sun and they have one lakh times more gravity than the earth. And that is what it's very important for us to understand the evolution of stars and the structure of stars if you want to know more about the different evolution levels of stars. So white dwarfs, red giants and of course if we talk about black stars, black uh, dwarfs, these are also very important. So we will discuss everything. And as I can show you with the help of this picture that this is a white dwarf. So how do stars actually have their energy? Why do they become white dwarf? How will they become a black hole or a black dwarf? Everything is important for you to understand over here. So if I have to tell you how do stars have their energy? Now, stars get their energy with the help of nuclear fusion. Keep this in mind. Nuclear fusion and not fission. And they fuse hydrogen atom with helium in their core with the help of nuclear fusion to get their energy. And that is important. Fuse hydrogen in their cores into helium with the help of nuclear fusion. I am repeating for you to be very careful with the terms such as nuclear fission and fusion. So it is going to help you for actual better understanding and remembering the facts. And then because of nuclear fusion, a lot of heat is generated and outward pressure. Outward pressure is also generated. And there is also an inward push of gravity for the stars to not expand beyond the limits. Okay. So, because of nuclear fusion and emission of heat and pressure, the star starts to expand. But in order to balance it, balance the outward expansion, the gravity is such that the star remains intact. Okay? And when the hydrogen used as a fuel vanishes, the fusion slows down. And after a period of time, what happens? When there is no fuel, the problem with any a star which has a lot of mass is that it will eventually collapse into itself. This is known as the Chandrasekhar limit. We will talk about the Chandrasekhar limit as well. Okay. So here as you can see, this white dwarf has used up all its fuel and now it cannot have, it won't be emitting energy. But a white dwarf is still visible through telescope, Hubble telescope, TESS, so everything we will talk about. TESS, if I tell you, TESS is Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. Okay. And it was launched in the year 2018 with the help of SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. And its work, what does it do? It actually looks for the brightest stars in our universe. So Hubble telescope and TESS, these were used by the group of scientists to know what actually is happening 
with the white dwarf that we are going to discuss in future. Okay, and this test has been launched by NASA, and it is a mission which is led by Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and it has its seed funding from Google. These are certain facts for you to remember. Let's move forward and talk about the Chandrasekhar limit. Chandrasekhar limit. It is the limit, and it is a basically a term for a star which has attained the theoretically possible maximum mass. When the maximum mass has been achieved by a star, it has to. It has to stay within the limits of one point four times of the size of the sun. Understand? If a star which has achieved the maximum mass possible, theoretically possible, cannot expand beyond one point four times of that of the size of the sun, because if it does so, it will eventually experience thermonuclear supernova and that is known as explosion it will collapse into itself the gravity is going to be so huge that it will collapse into itself and it will become either a neutron or a black hole so you can see here neutron star when any white dwarf star's mass increases greater than chandrasekhar limit so this limit is the chandrasekhar limit maximum mass and that won't allow the star to grow more than 1.4 times that of the size of the sun this is the chandrasekhar limit remember this and when it does then it will either turn into a neutron star or a black hole this is the black hole okay so these are the basic things we haven't discussed yet about the switching on and off phenomenon of the white dwarf okay and certain certain times what happens not always certain times that neutron stars white dwarfs basically become into black dwarfs that means they do not have any possible chances of emitting energy and light up till now there has been no discovery and no recognition of the black dwarfs because the oldest stars that we know of are are not eligible to become black dwarfs not all white dwarfs become black dwarfs this is an important statement for your prelims it could be asked that all white dwarfs will become black dwarfs but no not all but some might okay let's move forward and talk about the white dwarf that has been in the news so the white dwarf is a part of a binary system that means two objects called tv pictoris tv pictoris is a binary system which has a white dwarf and a star another star that is why it is known as a binary system okay and this belongs to the pictoris constellation it is 14000 light years away from the earth okay and as this material approaches if we talk about what is actually happening that these two objects the white dwarf and the star they are rotating in actually they are rotating against each other that means they are a part of the same system and because of this what is happening material is being transported from the star to the white dwarf how you can see from here that these are the this is supposedly tv pictoris tw pictoris and they are a part of the binary system because they are revolving and rotating against each other what is happening the material from the star is going to the white dwarf and it is getting collected as a disk as in as a disk and what happens that this material made of plasma and other materials made of dust plasma and other materials as soon as it gets closer and as much as it gets closer of the white dwarf it becomes brighter and this is very important for you to understand when we will talk about the switching on and off of the white dwarf so as the material is getting closer of the white white dwarf uh, what is happening 
that it is getting brighter the disc is known as as you can see and as this material approaches the white dwarf it forms an accretion disc so accretion disc is being formed like this all right and this is made of plasma gas and other material as the accretion disc material slowly sinks closer towards the white dwarf it will be brighter the white dwarf will become brighter when this happens the disc is still bright okay when the materials are getting closer the disc is still bright and it takes two approximately 1 to 2 months for the entire material from the other star to the white dwarf to get accumulated as a disc and then it might happen that no more material is left out and the white dwarf will drop its brightness the brightness will lower down but this has not happened with the star or the binary system in discussion and why is this possible tw pictoris has dropped its light in 30 minutes it shouldn't be happening because it takes approximately 2 months approximately i am saying because it's not exact approximately 2 months for the entire material to get drained but how is it possible that so quickly it dropped the light it may be possible because of magnetic gating magnetic gating i can write it here magnetic gating so magnetic gating is actually the spinning of the magnetic field of the star in such a manner it spins so fast that there is a cut off between the white dwarf and the other star and the material is unable to reach the white dwarf and that is why the brightness has dropped now because of the spinning there has been a cut off from the food and the white dwarf is not getting the food anymore and that is why sudden drop in brightness this is what has been expected of the tw pictoris all right and the significance is such that we should understand the accreted disk does not only form for the white dwarf it also forms for black holes and it is very important this phenomenon is very important to know about the black holes because black holes they remain the king of mystery in our universe and the physics behind accretion how black holes and neutron stars feed material from the nearby star it is important because seldom it has also been witnessed that the star will stop feeding the white dwarf the materials that we talked about they will stop feeding and why is this possible it is still not known yet not known so as i told you that neutrons black holes black hole specially remains a mystery a huge mystery that will take probably years and years to be revealed so this might help in order to know how and why does the proper channelization of material for black holes occur and black holes are important because we all want to know about the origin of the universe how did our universe come into place so let's now talk about our main spaced question okay what is a white dwarf and why is it important to understand the process of switching off and on of a white dwarf this is on all right now i hope you'll be answering it correctly i mean practicing it correctly that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching